was a peace offering from my husband after a very disastrous dinner party in which one of the guests he'd invited didn't eat anything I had served. And I actually had to send out to the local pub for steak and kidney pie for her. Well, it's a very, very pretty thing. It's, as you know, opals, beautiful opals. Um, before about 1850, opals came from uh, Czechoslovakia, and they were horrible, dull little things. And in 1850, they started opening up the opal mines in Australia. And where opals get this lovely colour from, this lovely play of colour, is they're made of silica and water. And it's the water which actually makes the opal, because it's like an oil slick. You get this play, uh, diffraction, between the different layers of the silica with the water in between. And that's sometimes why people think opals are unlucky, because they can dry out. So you don't really want to keep them in a very, very dry atmosphere. And you, did you manage to find out what your husband paid for? No, I shouldn't think it was over the top, because I don't think it was that big an apology. Oh, really? So... <laughs> well, I think it was a pretty handsome apology, actually, because uh, for insurance purposes, I would value this necklace at somewhere between five and £6,000 today. What? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to apologise to him. Well, I definitely think so. Oh, good God. I've just spotted that one, actually. Oh, this one? Oh, that was a birthday present. Oh, that's a pretty fabulous one as well. Uh, that, I think, was reasonably expensive. <laughs> but yes, that looks like a few thousand pounds. Well, thank really? You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's much more valuable, actually, because that's a black opal. Well, I think my and husband there. paid about £1,500 for it. Oh, well, he's obviously got a good eye for these things. I think I should keep I'll him. I'll have to employ him myself. <laughs> Well, thank you for bringing them anyway. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, really great. I don't believe it. Well, there's a splendid collection of Staffordshire figures you've brought along. Have you been collecting for a long time? Uh, yes, this collection was compiled over about a 20-year period, mainly in the 60s and 70s. Oh, so these were bought when these things were not quite as fashionable as they are now? That's right. A, a yeah. lot of the smaller figures were yeah. around sort of £15. Pounds. These, are, these are very interesting figures because most of them were made in the 1820s and 1830s, and they have this uh, bocage, this um, frond-like thing in the, uh, behind, uh, and this is really in imitation of the 18th century figures, I'm sure you know, like Chelsea and so on. It's a part of the revived Rococo to have these as part of their style. Uh, and they really are very remarkable, but in, in another way they are just sort of peasant art. They're not very sophisticated, and at the time they were made they were very inexpensive uh, to buy. People just uh, got them at fairgrounds and so on, and they reflected the life of the times. They actually predate, of course, the Staffordshire flatback figure, I'm sure you know yes. that. Yeah. Um, uh, I particularly like this figure, Songsters, and there you see she is playing a triangle, he's playing some kind of flute. It's a wonderful figure, that. And on the back, we have the mark, Walton. Yes. Now, Walton, of course, John Walton, who was potting from um, 1820 to 1846, and is principally known for this kind of figure. So that's a rare figure. And it's uh, one of a pair. And it's one of a pair. And then here we've got this ram, um, and again you've got the bocage at the background, and we turn him round again, and another name, which is a very rare name, Selman. Now, um, Selman, I don't know if I've ever seen another Selman mark piece. He was a potter who came after John Walton in the 1860 uh, period, 64, 65, and that's an extremely rare figure. Um, you can perhaps see on it there has been some repair. And this is one of the problems with these figures, yeah. I'm sure you realise. Yes. And that affects the price. Um, the figures have gone up a great deal in price since you paid 15 or 20 pounds or whatever it was for them. Those nowadays, um, with the mark, are getting on for something in the region of 750, even a thousand pounds for one that's not been restored. Not for a pair, for or a pair. For the pair. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Sorry. Each. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, they've gone up enormously. And as for the others, um, they will range dependent on the amount of damage, the amount of restoration, uh, the rarity of the figure. A bit like postage stamps, but they will range over anything from three to seven or eight hundred pounds each. It's very pleasing. <laughs>